Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. This is a different kind of video. Let me tell you a little story. So a couple of months ago, I wanted to evaluate Olympus and their camera gear for wildlife photography. And there are a number of reasons for this. One is that I was curious for my own use as to whether or not there might be a place in my kit uh, for Olympus gear. But the main reason is that I get a lot of questions from people, including from people who are new to wildlife photography and who are looking to uh, buy their first set of gear for wildlife photography, as to whether or not Olympus is something that might be suitable for them. So I talked to Olympus and they very kindly sent me some gear to evaluate. And initially, I thought I would only need it for a couple of weeks. As it turned out, I received the gear right about the time that the COVID-19 lockdown began. So that made it very hard to get out and do any wildlife photography. I contacted Olympus towards the time that uh, I was supposed to send back the gear and they very kindly extended the evaluation period. And so I ended up having the gear for probably about six weeks. And I shot a video and I then sat on that video for many, many, many weeks. And it wasn't until today that I thought I really should push it out. And there are a number of reasons that I wanted to do that. I wanted to, to get it out now. So what will follow uh, after this segment is the, the review that I shot a few weeks ago. It, it was in the same space, but you'll see that, that, that things look a little different. And I will, as I typically do when I review camera gear, I will give a brief introduction to the system. I will talk about things that I found interesting about it, things that impressed me, things that I think needed some improvement, and then we'll look at some images. And then I'll come back and talk about my final thoughts on the system. Okay, here we go. Olympus has a wide range of cameras that cater for users from beginners to professional shooters. And wildlife photographers are definitely one of the groups that they are catering to. Their entire range is built on the Micro Four Thirds platform. And if you're not familiar with that, it refers to the sensor that is in these cameras. They have a long history of building cameras on this platform and they are the major player uh, in Micro Four Thirds. And they've really made it their own and they seem to be very committed to continuing on the platform and it seems for now only on this platform. And I say that especially also because the other notable player in Micro Four Thirds is Panasonic, but Panasonic have now diversified into full frame systems and it seems, in fact, that that might actually be their new focus now. So Olympus is really the major player in Micro Four Thirds. So let me tell you about three things that I found interesting about these cameras. Now, the first thing is something that is sort of in some ways obvious and always comes up whenever Olympus cameras are discussed, and that is the sensor. And whenever that micro four third sensor is discussed, there's almost inevitably a discussion about the pros and cons of the sensor. So let's just get that out of the way. Yes, the sensor is smaller. It is a smaller sensor. It is about a quarter of the size of a full frame sensor, a little bit bigger than that. The benefit of that is that you can have smaller and lighter lenses. However, you don't get anything for free. Uh, and there is a price to pay with using that smaller sensor. You get reduced dynamic range, increased noise, a deeper depth of field, which does affect your ability to isolate subjects from the foreground and background. And you're also potentially constrained in terms of the resolution that you can get out of the sensor. These sensors, are, certainly the one in this camera, has 20 megapixels of resolution. The sensors that I use, the full frame sensors that I use on uh, on my highest resolution cameras have 60 megapixels. So that's three times as much resolution. And that's uh, quite a, a, a difference. Now, the second thing that's interesting is that wildlife photographers are really one group of photographers who can really st stand to 
potentially gain the most benefit from these small sensors and the weight and size savings that you get with the lenses. And I say that because most of those benefits are going to be realized at the longer end. If you're looking at shorter lenses, like wide angle lenses, there's not as much of a difference between a lens on this system and a lens on a full frame system. But if you're talking about longer lenses, there's a big difference. So as an example, this is the Olympus EM1X camera body, and this is their 300 millimeter f4 prime lens. It has a field of view that is equivalent to a 600 millimeter full frame lens. Now I don't have a 600 millimeter prime full frame lens, but I have a 400, and this is it here. And you can see there's a substantial difference in terms of the length, and uh, also if you look at the diameter of the lenses, big, big difference as well. Now in terms of weight, the Olympus setup here is about two kilograms in weight, and that would be even lighter if I was not using a grip style body like this EM1X. If I was using something like the EM1 Mark III, it would be even lighter. So this is about two kilograms, and over here with this setup, it's about three and a half kilograms. So that's a pretty substantial difference. But obviously, when you are traveling, uh, whether you're flying or if you're, say, hiking, and those are two things that, that wildlife photographers do a lot of, it's going to be a real benefit to you uh, to be able to transport these, uh, these cameras, uh, the, the, the camera bodies and the lenses around a lot more easily. And the other thing that is really actually even more important is that you can be a lot more agile in the field. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of hand-holding when photographing wildlife and not being bound by a tripod you can move very quickly and nimbly with a system like this, and that's, that's a really great benefit. The other thing that I think that's interesting about these cameras is that a lot of people, because the cameras are smaller, may be tempted to think of these as toys. But Olympus is not playing around with these cameras. They are building serious tools intended to cater for the needs of a broad range of photographers, including professional photographers, and uh, the build quality and the ergonomics and the functionality all reflect that. Now let me tell you about three things that really impressed me with these cameras. The first thing is that Olympus has some great glass, some great lenses. Now possibly the most interesting lenses for wildlife photographers in this system are two of the lenses that, that I had. Uh, one of this is this 300 millimeter f4. It has quite substantial reach and it's very lightweight and small, but it's very sharp, very high quality uh, and very fast to focus. Uh, another lens is this lens here, which is a constant aperture zoom. It is a 40 to 150, which is equivalent to an 80 to 300 millimeter in full frame uh, terms. And it is a f 2.8. Uh, so this is a really nice lens, also very sharp, very fast to focus. What is even more interesting is that Olympus is working on a 150 to 400 f 4.5 zoom, so a constant aperture zoom, which again, that would have a equivalent field of view uh, to a full frame lens that would be 300 to uh, 800 millimeters, uh, and that lens will also apparently have a built-in 1.25x teleconverter. So that's pretty interesting. And uh, I think that's interesting also because, now I'm, I'm mostly a prime lens shooter, uh, and I'm used, that works for me because on the cameras that I typically shoot with, because I have 60 megapixels, it's easy for me, even though I can't zoom with the lens optically, I have a lot of flexibility with the resolution of the lens of, of the sensor to be able to zoom in in crop mode in the camera or to uh, crop later in post. Now with a 20 megapixel sensor, like in these cameras, uh, there's less flexibility to do that. So having a zoom lens is going to help you get the most out of that, that lower resolution. So I find that uh, Pretty interesting, and, and I think that the fact that they've got some great glass out now uh, and they're working on this other lens and hopefully others as well, uh, I, that, that's really impressive. Uh, the other thing that, that I found really impressive and made these cameras a real joy to use is the ergonomics are fantastic. They're really well built. All the controls have been really well thought out. Uh, it, it 
it's really uh, a joy to, to, to use these, these cameras. They're also very well uh, weather sealed. Uh, Olympus also makes a very big deal about their image stabilization, which is quite impressive. And uh, I'll also say that the, the cameras are very uh, customizable. And a little bit like, like Sony, this can be a good and a bad thing. It means that there's quite a, a learning curve in the beginning uh, as you're trying to figure everything out. But once you've got everything set up the way that you want uh, and, you, and you get practiced at, at, at using the, the controls, you can have a very efficient workflow on these cameras. The other thing that's impressive is that Olympus are doing some very interesting things in terms of um, features that are, you know, almost computational photography in nature. And I and I discussed some of these in a previous video on, on that topic. So this includes the fact that they have image recognition. Uh, they they've got the ability in this camera, for example, to to recognize planes and trains and automobiles. And uh, in the EM1 Mark III that they recently released, they have a feature called Starry Sky Autofocus that can recognize stars. So they're really uh, evolving the platform. Uh, they're putting some serious processing power in these cameras. Uh, and I will say also the general uh, performance of the cameras, the, the autofocus speed, the, the speed of, of just working with the menus and the various features, the, the, it's, it's very fast and responsive and that's what you need uh, when you're in the field photographing wildlife. Now let me tell you about three things that I think could do with some improvement. So the first thing is that while Olympus does have some advanced autofocus capability, they have some good tracking capability, they have subject detection as I mentioned before for things like trains and planes, uh, they don't have any kind of animal eye autofocus. And that is something that Sony has had for a while. Nikon now have it, and Canon have announced advanced animal autofocus in their coming mirrorless cameras uh, like the EOS R5. So Olympus don't have anything like this right now, and if they're going to be pitching to wildlife photographers, they really need to be thinking about that. And clearly they have the platform, they have the processing power, uh, they have the framework already for this, especially in, in this camera and some of their, their higher end cameras. The other thing I'll say is that although the ergonomics are generally very impressive and the cameras are a joy to use, I did find the, the resolution of the viewfinder lacking. Now I'm used to the very high resolution viewfinder in the A7R4. Uh, and recently I looked at uh, Fuji's GFX100 that also has a similarly high resolution viewfinder. So when you go to a lower resolution viewfinder like the one in this camera, you really do notice it. I'll also say that uh, I think although Olympus is, has made some impressive glass already, uh, they are really the dominant lens maker on the Micro Four Thirds platform and I feel they, they really could do a lot more. It's exciting that they're working on this 150 to 400 but I would personally like to see some bigger aperture glass because we have to remember that even when they have uh, lenses like say a 300 f4, that f4 is not really the same f4 as you're going to get on a full frame system. So uh, even though obviously one of the benefits of this system is smaller and lighter glass, uh, having something like, for example, a perhaps 250 f2, that would be really interesting to me. Uh, and I say that also because 300 millimeters on this system, which is equivalent to 600 millimeters in full frame terms, that is often actually too tight. It's too, too close. Um, and I'm used to shooting with a 400. Now, when I shoot with a 400 on my on my a7R4, I have the ability to crop in a lot because I have 60 megapixels to work with. And in fact, if I crop all the way into the same resolution as this camera, I can actually get to 692 uh, millimeters equivalent. So, uh, but when I don't need to do that, I've got 400 millimeters and that's often enough for me. In fact, it's sometimes that's even too tight. Uh, so I would actually prefer something a shorter, but that has a bigger aperture. And now I want to show you some images that I took with this camera. Now, whenever anybody reviews cameras, uh, it's always expected that they will show some images, but I think that this is actually a really dangerous thing because it's, it's very easy to see some good images, uh, 
some impactful images and think that it's all entirely uh, up to, the, you know, because of the camera. Uh, and that's not really the case, especially in wildlife photography, that uh, whenever you see an image, it's the result of the skill of the photographer and the opportunity at the time. And the equipment may play a role in that. Uh, it may have enabled the photographer to get an image they might not have been otherwise been able to get with uh, different or lesser equipment or it may really not have, have played much of, of a role at, at all. So what I want to do is I want to show you 10 images. Uh, and these are images that I took not just with this camera, but also with uh, my Sony equipment. So I went out in the field and I had this camera and I had the 300 millimeter f4, this lens. I also did have the 40 to 150 with me as well, but I ended up uh, not using it for any of the images that I'm going to show you. I also had my Sony equipment with me as well. I had my 400 millimeter lens and I had uh, my 135 millimeter lens. So I'm gonna show you 10 images. Now I'm not going to tell you which images I took with which cameras. I, I will say, as I said before, that I took some of them with this camera, the EM1X and this 300 millimeter F4, and I took some of them uh, with my Sony with 400 and some with the 135. Uh, and I cropped them uh, all in a way that would make it harder for you to tell which system I used. Because typically uh, with the Micro Four Thirds system, the, the uh, images have a four to three aspect ratio. And on a full frame system, they have a three to two aspect ratio. So I cropped everything as either three to two, uh, or in some cases I cropped some of them one to one in a, in a square aspect ratio. So. The point here really is that uh, you can certainly get great images with this camera. You can get images that are sharp, uh, it's got great autofocus, so you can nail moving subjects, uh, no problems there. Uh, now, the thing also to remember is that there is the experience of shooting with the camera and there's also the experience of editing the images later on. Uh, and the dynamic range of the images from this camera are not as great as the ones that I'm used to with some of my other cameras. Uh, as I mentioned also, there is no animal eye autofocus here. So when you're shooting with a shallow depth of field, uh, sometimes uh, it's going to be harder to, to grab focus on the eyes of the animal, for example. So these are all images of a uh, red fox kit and later on some images of uh, the mother, the vixen uh, at that den. Uh, some of them were taken in quite harsh light uh, and they were all shot wide open. So uh, when I shot with this lens, I shot at f4. When I shot uh, with my Sony lenses, it was at f2.8 or at f1.8. So that, that obviously will also affect the, the depth of field uh, as well. So here's an image of uh, one of the kits. And uh, also uh, here's a, another image of that same kit, uh, a portrait uh, orientation another image of the kit and you could see at this at location there were quite a lot of challenges in terms of the, the backgrounds a lot of distractions in the way uh, and uh, that made it, it challenging also depending on how each lens rendered the, the bokeh uh, and then you get an image like this where uh, you know it's a challenge because there were, there were actually objects in front now this was also a good uh, way to test the autofocus as well So a number of images of this kit. Some of these were taken quite close, or at least they appear to be quite close. And then this is the, the mother, the vixen. There are two images of her. I hope you found the review of that gear helpful and informative. As I'm wrapping things up here, I will put up here the information about the images that I just showed you so you can see which of them were taken with the Sony gear and which of them were taken with the Olympus gear. As always, whenever you are looking at any images from any camera review or evaluation, you have to be very careful what you infer from that. Uh, if you see an image that speaks to you strongly, if you find it very impactful, it's not necessarily just because of the camera gear. And conversely, if you find one that you really don't like, it's not necessarily because the camera gear was lacking. There are many variables that go into how an image is, is taken, including the 
opportunity at hand and the skill of the photographer and the decisions that the photographer makes at the time and the, the camera gear is just a tool uh, that plays a role. Uh, now to give you an, uh, an idea of one of the ways in which camera gear can play a role, I, so I, I was uh, in a boat once and I was uh, out and we were looking for whales and whales were breaching out of the water and uh, often they were very far away from the boat and the boat was rocking up and down a lot it was pretty choppy seas and so there I am with my full frame camera my long lens and I'm going up and down like this uh, and any when when the, the subject is so far away any movement uh, like that is is amplified I did not get one shot of those breaching whales the only guy who got a shot was a guy who had a tiny point and shoot because he was able to react very quickly and he was able to easily frame the shot and I didn't get any shots at all, right? So it's an asset sometimes to have a small camera like that. The thing about image quality is that uh, when you get used to a certain standard of image quality, it's very hard to go back from that. Uh, and I have this experience in many other ways. Uh, I have, uh, you know, I, I normally shoot with the A7R4. It's got 60 megapixels, full frame, fantastic image quality. When I have to go to the A9 II sometimes with only 24 megapixels, I really notice the difference. And I know many other photographers who have those same two cameras also have the same experience. I have a crop sensor camera, a Fuji camera that I use to, for sort of taking behind the scenes photos. I really notice uh, the difference in the image quality there. But for those kinds of photos that I take with that camera, it's not a problem. I have a Sony RX100 Mark VII, not the first uh, one inch sensor camera that I've had. I even had a RX100 Mark V before. I got the RX100 Mark VII for video. It's great for video. I can't stand using it for stills. Uh, I just cannot stand using it uh, because of the image quality and uh, it has some A9-like capabilities now. It can shoot 20 frames per, se per second. It's got animal eye autofocus. So the idea that you could take it into the field and use it as a, an additional camera to, to grab shots quickly uh, is, is a great idea. And I've tried it. Uh, and uh, yes, it's very carryable, but the price that I have to pay in terms of the image quality, it's not a compromise that I'm willing to make. And the reality is that all of this gear is fantastic. There are very few cameras and lenses out there that are really bad. Uh, they all have their place, they all have their pros and cons, they all have their a price that you pay. There's a price to pay for using a big sensor. Uh, when you use a, a 60 megapixel full frame sensor like I often use, there is definitely a price to pay and I've talked about it a lot on uh, in videos on this channel. Uh, when you have a smaller sensor like a micro four or third sensor, there's no getting around the fact uh, that you have a, a, a smaller dynamic range, uh, I've got less resolution uh, to work with. Is it bad? No, it's not bad. It just means that you have to figure out whether or not it's for you and whether it works for the kinds of images and the kinds of shooting that you want to do uh, or whether or not you will have to adapt. So I had a great experience shooting with the, the Olympus gear and it's definitely a system that I would recommend to people for certain kinds of shooting. Now I know there are people, for example, who are full frame shooters or were full frame shooters on Canon and Nikon and have moved to Olympus. And it's a huge uh, change for them in terms of the smaller size and the lighter weight. Uh, now many of them are coming from systems that are quite large and heavy. Uh, the Sony gear right now is not as large and as heavy as a typical Canon or Nikon equivalent kit. Uh, so I feel that for me, I'm in a place that I'm pretty happy with. Now that doesn't mean that I might not purchase some Olympus gear to use, uh, but if I was to do that, I would do it knowing the price that, that I'm paying and knowing what the pros and, and the cons are. I would not use it as a replacement for my current kit, uh, but it doesn't mean that it's not right for someone else. So this is something that I could talk about endlessly and I'm happy to, uh, if you want to continue the discussion, I invite you to hop on over to the Discord server that I recently set up. The link is in the description of this video below 
and uh, we can chat about this or any other aspect of wildlife photography. I want to say a big thank you to Olympus for letting me evaluate their gear. It was a great pleasure to work with folks at Olympus, uh, both the, the, the business people as well as the people in support. I had a great experience uh, engaging with the, the support folks over one of the issues that I, I was trying to work out. And that is also something that you should consider uh, whenever you're looking at any camera gear is, is what kind of a, a relationship you can have with, with the company. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.